Hey guys, so today I want to talk about GPU coolers, specifically the current generation of AMD and Nvidia cards. I'm going to juxtapose it with what came before. Are they really cooler and quieter? And you'll be surprised that some of them actually have some serious issues. Let's get started. Hey guys, Tiago with Classical Technology here. Remember to subscribe and smash that like button. They say every time you do, your PC runs a little cooler and a little more quiet. So let's just briefly talk about these uh, GPU coolers. Now, we're gonna leave water cooling aside because water cooling is the way that you really get the best thermal performance and you're gonna get the quietest performance for the most part, but that involves taking out the CPU cooler and you know really doing a custom loop. That's more of sort of a niche market. We're gonna talk about the stock coolers of these GPUs. I've been using these various GPUs now for the last few months ever since the new generations came out and I do certainly have a few thoughts. Let's start with uh, AMD, a pretty easy one. Now this generation it's actually a very good cooler. Now this is going to be the 6900 XT. It has the exact same cooler as the 6800 XT. The 6800 has a thinner cooler and the 6700 XT also has a different thinner cooler and we're talking about the reference model here that's directly from AMD. It kind of looks like this. Now the performance of the 6900 XT when it's the bigger cooler, even though it's a more powerful GPU than like a 6800, this actually runs cooler and more quiet. That's going to be due to just the better cooler design. Generally, reference coolers were much maligned. If we compare this to the Vega 64, I mean, that's a blower style GPU, meaning there aren't fans like this. Um, there's only one fan and it's going to sort of take all of the hot air out of the back of the GPU. It gets pretty loud, pretty noisy. If you're, you know, doing a gaming or rendering or something like that, it's certainly not going to be the most comfortable experience being right next to it. It kind of really blows that hot air out. While something like this, it does still generate a lot of heat, of course. We're talking about still fairly high TDP GPUs. It does it in a way that's a little bit more quiet and it keeps the GPU a lot cooler. Like a Vega 64 is going to hit 84C when it's uh, you know really sort of going all out in the benchmark or something like that a cooler like this is going to be considerably cooler you know no pun intended it's usually going to be in the 60s or 70s depending on what type of workload that you're putting on this so certainly there's been a fairly big improvement and that makes a lot more of a difference than you think in terms of just your gaming comfort using your pc you don't want to be gaming and just have something really blaring hot air and sort of just being really really noisy as well even if you're using headphones or something like that so Definitely the AMD coolers have improved considerably. Now, the third party coolers, generally something like an Asus Strix or you know, a MSI GPU, they're gonna have this type of design anyway. The cheaper ones may have two fans, the more expensive ones are gonna have three fans. Some of the really fancy ones will have an AIO mounted, like the 6900 XT just had a pretty a new version that actually has an AIO connected. It's meant to keep it you know, cooler, more quiet. And of course, you can usually boost those clocks a little bit more, get a little bit more performance. So third-party GPUs have traditionally been pretty good, but I'm happy to see the AMD reference GPUs improve as well. Now, over to NVIDIA, and this is where there have been some great advancements, but we also have some serious problems to address. Sort of the 1080 Ti was just like the Vega 64. Very noisy and it get pretty hot around 84 to 85C, and the next generation, which is the 2080 Ti, came with sort of a design that's more similar to this. People even joke that this looked like a 2080 Ti cooler, even though it's definitely a little different. So 2080 Ti, much better thermal performance, not as loud, not as noisy. And here we're talking about the reference model. The third party GPUs, like I said, an Asus Strix or, you know, the AVGA, like 4013, those typically have always had pretty good, efficient coolers. Now, with this generation, the GPUs certainly have some great coolers look at the 3090 for example as well as the 3080 with that pass through design it's very very unique it generally keeps the gpu core very cool but we do run into some serious problems and that's where things kind of fall apart a little bit with these reference coolers now this amd gpu has regular gddr6 memory the 3090 3080 will have gddr6x which is a much faster runs a considerably hotter type of vram the 3090 also has it on the back up here while the 3080 is just going to have it on the bottom so a lot of people have reported problems with the stock coolers 
The VRAM runs extremely hot, especially if you're playing a game that's like, you know, really ray tracing intensive. If you're doing mining, that's I think where most people figure this out, or even rendering a video or something like that, you're really going to see that type of overheating result where you're going to get considerable thermal throttling because of the VRAM if it's bad enough. Some of the third party GPUs like an EVGA for the Win 3 or an Asus Strix will not be nearly as severe. Some of them can actually maintain a fairly safe VRAM temperature. Generally, that's going to be under 104, 105 um, T junction temperature in Celsius. Now, a lot of them you do want to be closer to 90 or less. When you water cool one of these GPUs, you definitely can be under 90, even under full load. So, the Founders Edition NVIDIA cards, specifically the 3080 and 3090, because of that GDDR6X, they just run extremely hot. They'll go all the way up to 110 Celsius, and then they start to severely thermal throttle, therefore giving you significant worse performance not only that even if your gpu core is very cool if it's like 60 or 70 you may be surprised to hear those fans spin at a hundred percent because it's going off the vram temperatures when these gpus first came out we couldn't see that thermal information but now programs like hw info 64 do show you all of that thermal information so it's considerably better to know what's actually going on sometimes of course putting more fans in your case will help improve that even fans pointed at the back plate there even are coolers from like ek where you put you know literally you put a water block behind on the back of the gpu to cool that vram generally water cooling will reduce those temperatures but with the stock reference coolers changing thermal pads have been something that people have saw that it really does give you a nice benefit some people have gotten you know a 10 to 20 degree drop in that vram temperature even using the stock reference cooler again you just basically have to you know take those uh, thermal pads out that nvidia put on there which really aren't sufficient and then basically switch it out now i don't know if the 3080 ti has improved much on that design if nvidia has changed their thermal pads but i'm sure they're aware of the issue so i would hope that future gpus certainly come with a much improved design because it certainly took away from how awesome the nvidia cooler is for the 3080 and 3090 it's such a really nicely designed and, and very nice working cooler with that pass-through design that the vram overheating issue really made people think that the coolers aren't as good as they actually are but it really comes down to just being an inefficient and bad use of those thermal pads as well as you know the 3090 gdr 6x does actually run really really hot so you do have to keep other things in mind when you're installing them sort of in your system with your airflow and keeping everything in mind sort of as one entire build so to summarize both on the amd and the nvidia side specifically the reference coolers have got considerably better aside from that issue with the vram that you know the nvidia gpus have have, which kind of understandable because of the GDDR6X, but on these expensive GPUs, they really do have to have a better thermal pad solution. Aside from that, definitely reference designs are getting first much better looking than they used to be but also working a lot better in their typical gaming loads so hopefully next generation these designs for the reference models even get closer to what the third party uh, gpus typically perform at and that would mean that these third party gpus like the asus strix and evga gpus would have to make their cooling even better evolve so that would be really great for us to level up the gpu coolers because quite frankly it's been kind of the same for the last few years in terms of the third-party coolers and i think it's going to take these reference models like the founders editions and the amd gpus to have much better coolers to really start pushing everybody else to have very nice cool performing and really interesting cooling designs as well all right guys so i hope you enjoy the video remember to subscribe smash that like button and i'll see you guys on the next video